Uh, well, good evening, everyone. As Trent has so eloquently stated that we have uh, quite a bit to talk about in our, we'll say, short two hours. Um, so I'll get us started here with the Pledge of Allegiance. And so Trent, if you'll so graciously throw a flag up for us, that would be wonderful. All right, here we go, all. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Perfect, thank you. Um, let's see, I'm gonna try to go through um, and make our way around for introductions. Again, I'm Brian Hodson, I'm the mayor of Canby and your co-host and co-chair for this fine committee of um, and think tank that is Clackamas County Coordinating Committee. Um, my co-host and co-chair, Mr. Savas. Good evening, everyone. Paul Savas, Clackamas County Commissioner. And I will start and I will do my best to keep there's an easier way to do this, Trent, and I should know this by now because everybody jumps around as we go through introductions and I lose track. Um, we'll start with Mr. Myers. Good evening, everyone. Martin Myers. I'm with uh, Red Bio Fishers Mill CPO and I'm the C4 CPO rep. Thank you, sir. Um, Mayor Lyle Smith. Good evening. I'm Rachel Lyle Smith, Mayor of Oregon City. Perfect, thank you. Um, Mr. Sherman. Good evening, Brett Sherman, City Councilor, City of Happy Valley. Wonderful, thank you, sir. Um, Commissioner Lewis. Good evening, Christine Lewis, Metro Council District 2, Best District. I say that only because Shirley Craddock is also listening. My district's better. She doesn't have a voice, but she is Chair of JPAC, so we're really glad she's listening tonight. Good to know that there's plenty of trash talking amongst the, uh, you know, amongst y'all there. That's good. Uh, Mr. Brashear. Good evening and thank you. Uh, Dwight Brashear, Transit Director for SMART, City of Wilsonville. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Miss Jamie Stasny. Good evening, everyone. Jamie Stasny, Clackamas County Regional Transportation and Land Use Policy Coordinator. Good to see you. Welcome, Mr. Buck. Good evening, I am Joe Buck, mayor of Lake Oswego, the greatest and largest city in the county. Everyone's got to brag. Um, Kath, Ms. Heisey. <laughs> uh, Councilor Kathy Heisey, uh, Council President, whatever. Uh, from Milwaukee, I am also your uh, Clackamas City's representative to JPACT, and I think Milwaukee is the best city. Thank you very much, Mayor Buck. I'm going to catch you while you've got your mouth full. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Gronke. Ed, did you want to introduce your area? Ed, you're muted. I'm sorry, I was bad. Okay. Pressing the wrong button. I am the uh, county uh, county representative to MPAC, citizen representative. Perfect. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, next, uh, Mayor Kaiser. Mayor Scott Kaiser from the best city at the very southern edge of Clackamas County, Malala, Oregon. Well, bold statements going on tonight. Um, Tammy, hi Tammy, how are you? Good, Mayor of Gladstone and the best riverfront city in Gladstone. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Rachel, or sorry, Mayor Smith, sorry, but we're better, we're way better. <laughs> Nothing to say on that one. Mr. Cook. Um, a lot, yeah, Rick Cook, Stafford Hamlet, uh, representing the Hamlets, along with Mark Myers, the best overall representation of the county. You went all encompassing, Rick. I like it. Miss Christopherson. 
everybody, Teresa Christofferson, Clackamas County. I'm here as a uh, small transit provider, rural transit provider representative, and we'll go for uh, Mount Hood Express being the best um, public transit service on Mount Hood. There we go. And last but not least, Ms. Pratt. Valerie Pratt, Talton City Council in the best city on the western edge of Clackamas. Wow, we're up in the game for introductions for going forward. I like it. Okay. And last but not least here uh, in this group, uh, Mr. Wilson, the man that makes it all happen. Thank you very much. Trent Wilson, Clackamas County Government Affairs staff, representing the best group of elected officials here in the region, I'd say. Uh, my favorite anyway, and best group to work with for me. I do want to run through our attendees list real quick for the record because we have a couple of alternates in there and just um, for the purpose of our recording, noting that we keep our members in the live chat and our alternates would swing in if a member happened to leave. So you haven't had a chance to meet them yet, but new to your C4 group is uh, Councillor Rachel Verdick for Lake Oswego, who is Lake Oswego's new appointed alternate. So I just want to give her a shout out today and thanks for coming as well as Councilor Craddock from Metro, who is our Metro alternate. So thanks for being here today. So have Chris Lyons, County Staff, uh, Connor Ayers. Um, and I'm sorry, Connor, I don't remember who, <laughs> who you represent or work for today, but if you could hit me in the chat, that would give us a good clue. Uh, Dana Webb, who works with Oregon City in their um, employment or uh, transportation department. Jamie Lorenzini from Happy Valley. Karen Beard from Clackamas County. Mark Ottened uh, from Wilsonville. Thank you, Connor from Metro, representing Councilor Craddock. I appreciate that. And I will put that to memory. Uh, Mr. Scott Turnoy from ODOT, as well as Will Farley from Lake Oswego. So that's your crew listening in so far today. We do have a phone number, ends in 1524. Thanks for listening it's in. Mr. Jeffrey Goodman. Is that Mr. Jeff Goodman, former C4 member? There it is. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And to the attendees, thank you for tuning in. Um, so next on the agenda this evening, um, after all of that fanfare is approval of the minutes for the January 6, 2020, 2022 C4 meeting. Um, can I get a motion, please? So moved. Thank you. Can I get a sec or any, uh, can I get a second, please? I second. second. So a dual second uh, by the mayors. Thank you. Any discussion, notes, changes, et cetera? All right, seeing and hearing none. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Um, I will abstain since I was not at the meeting. So, but uh, thank you all. It looks like those minutes passed. All right. Um, we're going to move into the ODOT response to C4's December letter to um, OTC in regard regarding the use of the uh, IIJA funds. Trent, take us through it. Thank you very much. Um, so this is going to be a tag team effort with our good staff, Jamie Stasny here at Clackamas County. Um, what I think we've we talked about doing this before the meeting. And so what we think is going to be fruitful is to give you all an update about what's going on with the 205 project. And Jamie's going to help with that so that you have context on how to discuss this reply from ODOT. And so, yes, you sent a letter um, as C4 to the OTC in December. ODOT has replied to that letter. And there's a nuance in there uh, as to that as to that reply. Um, and before we talk about it, Jamie is going to sort of discuss and describe the um, current situation of where the ODOT and I-205 project is. That includes the RTP and the TPAC meeting tomorrow, per your question earlier, Councillor Heisey. Um, and then from there, uh, she'll give it back to me. I'll give you the options uh, moving forward um, for how, uh, what would help me help you uh, move forward with this discussion. So uh, I'll hand it to Jamie, who will hand it back to me, and then we'll open the floor for y'all to give us direction. Jamie? Thanks, Trent. Hi everyone, good to see you again. Um, so I'm here to give you an update on what's been going on. This is a very um, quickly evolving 
project. It changes every day. We're spending a tremendous amount of time uh, coordinating, collaborating, and trying to stay on top of all of the quick changes that are happening. So I'm going to give you the best rundown that I can of where we are and kind of how we got here um, before I turn it back over to Trent. So as I shared with you last time when I was here, I can't believe that was only a month ago, um, uh, ODOT is bringing forward a series of amendments to Metro. And they have to go through the Metro committees, MTAC, MPAC, TPAC, JPAC, and then to Metro Council uh, for approval. The request that they have is to amend an, the RTP and the MTIP to add a preliminary engineering phase of the I-205 tolling project into these regional planning documents. And this would allow them to complete the NEPA process for the I-205 project, as well as begin preliminary engineering of the toll gantries that would reside on 205. So that is the request. The, there has been a lot of concern, and I would say an amazing amount of regional alignment in that concern of a lack of information, and a lack of trust with ODOT, and a lot of pause about moving forward. And it, I would just say it's not really about what the amendments say. The challenge in my mind is more the fact that there are only two opportunities for JPAC and Metro Council to vote on this project. One is the ask they have right now. The other is when they come back at the end of 2023 and they ask to program the money to actually build those toll gantries. In between now and then, all the policy will be set and everything's going to happen and there's no votes at that table. All of that happens at the OTC. And we have no understanding of how the impacted local jurisdictions will be able to weigh into those conversations. Right now, it really looks like it's public testimony to the OTC. That's the only thing we're sure of. We can show up at a meeting and tell them how we feel, um, but there's no votes and there's no control. And that's very concerning, of course, to all of the local jurisdictions who will be impacted by potential diversion and also have questions about like, hey, where's this money going, right? There's a lot of questions and a, la a lack of information. So I will say since we met last, the MTAC group met. Um, that's a staff group. I'm a member of it. We voiced all of our concerns. We did not make a recommendation to MPAC. We just said, hey, guys, this is coming your way. We have all these questions and concerns. So that was passed on to MPAC. Impact then had a very, I would say, lively meeting. Um, I've heard others describe it as incredibly intense meeting where there was clear regional alignment, uh, as I mentioned earlier, around concerns. We have questions. We don't have any certainty and you want to vote. You want us to vote. So uh, as staff, I would say, uh, and Mayor Buck, certainly could fill in a lot of a lot of blanks there. There's a lot of detail that I'm skipping over, but I want to be brief. Um, so regional staff, we've been doing a ton of work to try and collaborate and coordinate with ODOT. We're not trying to say like, don't do this. We're trying to stop everything. We're really trying to get answers to your questions, to our questions that we've been asking for like four years um, and really trying to build some trust and really understand like, where are we going? Like, what is our why? Why are we doing this? And where are we trying to get to? Because we even haven't even had that conversation. So um, it's been, I will say frustrating uh, because we've been spending so much time and energy trying to collaborate and coordinate. And while we'll see a little bit of progress uh, with, with ODOT staff, uh, and I, I'm realizing I'm being recorded and this is a public meeting, I will just say we see a little bit of progress and then it disappears. Um, so we haven't really made a lot of progress other than they are acknowledging that they're hearing us and that they're understanding that there may need to be some changes to the amendments um, in order to make everyone comfortable and to build trust. So they are acknowledging that. Because of the pace of things, we had not seen any materials that are new for the TPAC meeting that is scheduled for tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. until five o'clock this afternoon, where we received, uh, as Councilor Heisey said, a series of um, information that I have not even fully had time to process, including some new amendments and all this language, um, ODOT is pressing the vote. So we have all been asking for more time to work together as staff in good faith to get to where we want to go. And ODOT has said, no, we're pressing the vote. So on the agenda for TPAC tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., there is a vote that is supposed to occur among that staff, a recommendation to JPAC on these amendments. And until five o'clock today, we didn't even know what we were voting on, really. So 
it's, I would just say it's, it's been very frustrating. I know everyone's trying to do good work, but the pace and the force at which ODOT is trying to press this through to meet a timeline that we can't understand, um, just leaves us all kind of scratching our heads. We'd like them to take a month or so, so we can work through this and, and we're not getting that. Um, so Commissioner Savas requested a delay back in December um, so that the vote wouldn't happen in January at JPACT. That was granted by Chair Craddock. Uh, Commissioner Savas has again requested a delay uh, of the decision that is set for February. Um, we have not heard a response on that. I learned today that Commissioner Hardesty from Portland made a similar request of Chair Craddock to delay. I know uh, at the impact meeting, uh, Mayor Callaway from Hillsborough had the same request to delay to delay and allow staff time to work through these amendments and and work together. Um, so far, I don't. Um, I don't believe there's been any delay. And I actually just heard from ODOT right before this meeting and was confirmed that they will not be delaying even if TPAC staff asks for it tomorrow morning. So that is what I know, the latest uh, that I have heard. And I will just say um, to wrap this up, the OTC met since I was last in front of you. They did receive the testimony. There was a, uh, a quote response, I would say, shared by ODOT where Chair, Chair Van Brocklin said essentially, uh, we can't do all things for all people with this uh, IIJA money and things like the I-205 project may need new revenue sources to be paid for. So I felt that that was an acknowledgement uh, that the request was heard. And then this response that came from ODOT staff seems to kind of accompany that, that notion. So with all of that being said, I'm going to turn it back over to Trent to guide you through the conversation. I'm here, happy to answer questions if I can be helpful. Thanks for your time. So process-wise, as it relates to JPAC and TPAC, um, your TPAC team, county and cities, is in the audience listening to your discussion tonight. So they can take the sentiments of this discussion into the meeting tomorrow and use that as appropriate during whatever happens at TPAC tomorrow. Uh, you then will have a chance at the C4 Metro subcommittee meeting to talk more about how you know the county positions at, at JPAC or MPAC um, want to respond in, in that particular forum. The question before you tonight is what to do with the response from ODOT uh, to the letter that you sent to them or to the OTC in uh, December. And so kind of piggybacking on what Jamie said, the context of this letter was a request from you, the C4 policy body, your group of policymakers, asking the OTC, a policy group, um, to please consider diversifying the revenue for the I-205 bottleneck project um, with the hopes of delaying or even mitigating the need to toll I-205 early. Uh, there's a clear nuance there that I think has been missed by at least some communication at ODOT that I feel is important to clarify is when we see ODOT communicate about the request, it seems to be that they're interpreting that you're asking for all $700 million so that there doesn't have to be a toll on I-205. And that's not what you're asking for. And Jamie and I in our meetings, and as well as Commissioner Savas and many of you have been very clear about that. So um, why it's being communicated otherwise by ODOT, we're not sure, but I just want y'all to know that y'all's communication and our communication has been clear that that's not what y'all have been asking for. You're, you've been very clearly asking for diversity of funding and have not been prescriptive to a different policy body on how they make those decisions. I think that's a very wise decision by your part to let them make their best decision, but to also be responsive to your request. So that was your December request. Um, and it was accompanied by a letter from JPAC to align the projects, you know, timing wise, uh, which is consistent with some policy recommendations that came out in 2018 and 19 from that toll committee. So I think some valid conversations there. So your request to the OTC policy body uh, had a response try to say this delicately, had a response from ODOT staff before that policy body, the OTC, had a chance to receive or hear your testimony. But it came the day before um, their OTC meeting by not an elected official, but by ODOT staff to answer the questions that you laid out, laid out in your December meeting. I would also say that that response, and it's in your packet, if you read it, is very technical all the reasons why the technical dot, dot, dot. They're not, that letter does not respond to your policy questions 
I believe because the, res the person responding in that letter, Brendan Finn, doing his best, uh, does not have the policy um, authority to make that decision. So um, I think you're in a tough spot where this letter could be received in a variety of ways, potentially as a slight where maybe um, the request by you has been punted to a staff person to reply and not be considered, or it, per them, they have said that that was not their intent, just to make sure that they've replied to you with some of the technical nuances of the letter. Up to you on how you receive that. Uh, but the timing and the author make it challenging to interpret what the intent of that letter actually is, in my opinion. So we're setting aside time today for you to discuss how you wanna move forward here. And I think you have three options. Jamie and I have talked about this. These options are coming from us um, and we're here to listen and help you however we can with any other context you might be requesting. One of your options is to reply to this response. Uh, per some discussions with the executive committee and, and talking with Jamie, we think a fruitful reply would not be to Brendan Finn, the um, UMO director who wrote this reply letter to you because that was not who you wrote your letter to. It would be to the OTC, thanking them perhaps for this technical reply, but still awaiting their policy response. Um, so that's an option that you have. Another option that you have is to pivot your strategy. Your letter was received and however you want to interpret it was received. Uh, you could pivot your strategy towards a more proactive engagement by each of your individual jurisdictions, not one letter from C4, but multiple letters or multiple phone calls, however you want to do it, sort of trying to get into that policy conversation with the OTC members. That's an option that you have as well. Another option is both. So you could reply to this letter. You could change tactics a little bit and move forward with a lot of the priorities that you've already engaged on. Um, you could do both. And maybe there's an option that one of you have that we haven't thought of, and that's okay too. But we wanted to put those recommendations out there for you for your discussion as you consider this response. And I think that's it for Jamie and me, and we're here for questions. Okay. Um, thank you, Trent. Thank you, Jamie, for that. I appreciate it. Um, well, first, I'm just, I guess, throw out on the table there. Um, how, how did, I guess, impression wise, how did many of you take this letter? I get the thumbs down, absolutely. But I mean, the Trent's point, like to me, for me, I will say having it come from ODOT versus who it was intended to, um, I thought that we just got pushed off um, and it was a, hey, thanks. But, um, you know, basically as I, you know, reread this again today was, um, thanks for your letter, but we're moving forward with tolling um, regardless of what you had to say, and we're not going to pursue any other funding options. This is the only, this is the only way. So, um, Brett, what did you, go ahead. Sure. No, I, I, I appreciate your perspective. And I, and I think that, um, you know, having, having been at MPAC and asked some questions that didn't get answered, you know, very, um, ambiguous responses this this letter continues with what i feel you know this is personal opinion are some ambiguous responses that um that i'm really just trying to get a good handle on you know when when we talk about things like and, and I, I think your conclusion is probably accurate which is we're moving ahead with tolling we don't want to confuse this issue with anything outside of the tolling discussion specific to this moving ahead as quickly as possible um, and I don't know that the, maybe the motive, I think the phrase that was used at our last meeting was, was um, you know, Mandy, Mandy Putney had indicated that, you know, they have momentum, they don't want to let go of the momentum. And, and I thought that was a, a pretty telling response, you know, it's um, when we talk about uh, delaying for a very short period of time to, so that OTC can, kind of, so we can understand the OTC funding mechanism so we can kind of discuss this, this a little bit more fully, um, the responses we get are on the, the uh, $24 million cost of annual delay. 
um, we get a response that uh, none of the grant programs will be able to fund the full cost of the 205 improvement projects. We're not talking about full funding at all. Um, you know, it, the, the response really isn't about what that small time frame is. And also, I guess there's also a response about um, uh, keeping it in line with the timeline, you know, that they don't want to jeopardize the timeline. And, and I'm not sure how that, no one could answer how that one month delay would jeopardize the entire timeline. And, and that's the part that I really have a little bit of a disconnect on is I, I don't feel like we're getting straight answers about why it's not being considered. It really is just, mo we're moving ahead with this and that's just kind of what's happening. So that's, that's how I'm feeling right now. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Brett. I, I, I agree. I mean, you just read the last paragraph of their response to us and you can see that it is, we're on a path it's urgent and it's full steam ahead, right? To keep the program on schedule for construction and avoid incurred costs due to delay, we're moving ahead. Um, we're on a timeline. We have a short period of time and we gotta keep moving. So, hey, thanks, but this is the way it is. Um, Mary, uh, Mayor Stemple? I don't think that they care what we have to say and what our feelings are. And that's clear in some of the, outreach events that I participated in where what we told them was completely different than what they listed as the stakeholders concerns or the citizens concern. It's just this ODOT bubble that they live in and that's all that they're going to look at. They're not gonna look at reality. So I took it as a slight. I took it that they just don't care what we have to say and they're just moving on. So I think that we need to ignore the letter because I don't think it was appropriate. And I think we need to reiterate our uh, concerns to the body that we sent the letter to initially. So Mayor Stemple, do you think that, um, I, I agree, I, I appreciate Mr. Finn's attempt at a response to us. Um, I think, so, do we need to take a firmer or more, um, I guess, verbose uh, letter uh, as a response? I think anything short of that will just um, get another response like the one that we received or no response at all. Okay. We're serious. This impacts all of us tremendously and they're just not getting it. So do we need to chain ourselves to you know, power poles or line, create lines across the freeway in protest. I don't want to have to go down that road, but there's a lot of people that feel that we're almost there. So we need to make a stand and we need to let them know that we're serious about this. Thank you. Councilor Heisey. Yeah, I just wanted to add a couple of things. I watched uh, the part of the OTC uh, hearing that I could when I wasn't in JPACT. And, uh, and so I caught Brendan's presentation and I did listen to the deliberations around the IIJ money uh, in the afternoon. And um, it was interesting because this conversation was, I think, somewhat intentionally uh, bracketed with uh, the consideration of the governor's orders on climate change. And I feel like there is a sense that the OTC needs to comply with that and that that gives them some grounding to, uh, to kind of push through and dismiss the more nuanced request that we are making, which is for a diversified funding stream. Um, and it felt to me like the, there was a, a sense of accord in, in the presentation that um, Mr. Finn was giving, a very good presentation, and the OTC and the, the presentations that had come before that. So I just thought that was interesting. I just kind of share that as a point of information. And then I, I would agree that a response letter is appropriate. And um, I feel like being very clear about saying, we hear that, O, that ODOT doesn't think that we're hearing them. No one's being heard. We want to be very plain in saying what we are requesting is a consideration of a diversification of funds. That is our policy question that is before you. 
In addition, our local communities are going to be impacted by all sorts of issues. We need to see before the NEPA process some accountability from ODOT on how that's going to be addressed. We need to see that there will be modeling that delivers projects that we know will be the places that are sticking points because we can already see that they're sticking points. And we need to also do that in modeling that doesn't look way out at 2040, 2045. We need to do that in real time when the people who still live there right now are still living there. We need to be looking at what is going to happen in 2027? What is going to happen in 2026? Um, and, and to be very explicit about, these are the reasons we are raising a fuss. These are the things we feel that in this process are policy decisions that have not been heard. And this is why we keep pressing and we keep asking for diversica diversification of the resources that are being applied to this project. We're not asking for $700 million. We're asking for assistance to get the assurances we need to continue to have safe, livable communities because we are freaked out about that. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Gronke. Well, Mayor Hudson, I think, you know, I'm, I'm the citizen member of this, com this committee. I know, it, I, I think of the experiences I had in Italy 20 years ago. Have you ever seen this gesture? Yeah. You know what it means. I do know what it means. And that was the, that was a definite impression I got in reading the letter from ODOT. I agree with everything that's been said up until now. I think it's time for this committee to not be so diplomatic, but actually be pretty straightforward and not worry about political, uh, political expediency, but just lay the issues out before ODOT as they exist. I know Mayor Buck is on this call. I think that certainly, I remember the last meeting of MPAC where we were told by the ODOT representative, they could not move ahead without the support of the community. And unless I read the room law wrong, I do not believe that MPAC will vote to support this at our next meeting in February. Ed, you kind of trailed off there. You kind of muted yourself. I said I don't believe that MPAC will move ahead in supporting this at our meeting in February. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that, Ed. Uh, Mr. Myers. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I agree with everything that's been said. I, although I'll take it a step further, I believe it is incumbent upon us to answer because if we do not answer, it could be implied later on or even suggested or brought up with us that we agreed with what was said. I have to, we have to put it on the record that we don't. So I think a, an answer is required. I think it should be directed to who we originally directed it to um, and that it should use the opportunity to lay out again in more aggressive terms, the points we raised earlier. Um, I would also suggest that I think that that letter might, should be copied because at this point it's a political fight. It's gotta go up the chain. ODOT needs to understand and the political players at the legislative and governor's office need to understand and the, the, um, the, the, the current parties that are running for governor need to be brought into this. So I would hypothesize a fairly lengthy copy list so that the letter would actually not just be written to OTC but would be written to the political players that we copy on the letter. Um, uh, I also have a question for staff, if I could. I don't understand the leverage. I don't know what would happen if we do not agree to the amendment of the RTP. They're pushing us on this. Do we have the ability to say no? Um, would Metro be behind us? And what would be the consequences of simply saying it? I, I think there is not a 
person in Clackamas County that is foretolling at this point. Politically, I think we all feel kind of competent where we're headed with this. But I'd like to know what it would actually happen to the downside, if I could. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. That's a really great question. Um, Jamie, you want to tackle that one? I will take a stab. <clears throat> I am not Metro staff, just being very clear, I'm Clackamas County staff. So I'm looking at you, Councilor Lewis. Correct me if I'm wrong, but my current understanding is that there are two required votes. MPAC and all the other committees are making recommendations. JPACT and Metro Council are the two that have to vote. If JPACT votes it down, it does not go on to Metro Council. Uh, if JPAC recommends approval, Metro Council then gets to take the issue up. So that's just so you understand like the structure of it, the rest are advisory votes. Those are the two kind of bicameral approvals that are required. Um, my understanding is if it is voted down, ODOT can take a break and come back. It is not dead forever. They can basically take time and bring it back. So that is one option. Uh, I would love to explain a little more clearly, and I, Trent, if it's possible, I would love to share my screen just quickly. I have an image um, that Councillor Heisey, I think, may have just been referencing that we have that is available that shows the timeline. Am I good to go? All right, let's see if I can pull this off. So this is, uh, this is I don't even think, up on the website yet. This is in the TPAC presentation for tomorrow, and it, I think it's really helpful. Actually, it's something that we all have been asking for for a long time. This is the first time when we've seen the I-205 toll project, which you can see here at the bottom of the screen, the Regional Mobility Pricing Project, the RMPP, um, as well as the policy development timelines all laid out um, here in the table. I, it, it's helpful because it shows here these green stars, you can see here, green star right here. This is where we are right now or somewhere around here. That is an actual formal action from Metro and JPACT. So you can see on the I-205 toll project, there's your green star. And on this, um, this image, it's the only one. And the image we saw before, there's another green star right here where Metro JPAC gets to consider the construction amendments. So to program the money to build the gantries. I think it may be a typo or we're losing opportunities, <laughs> but either way, this is the timeline. This is the opportunity that we have to vote. The leverage, and as I kind of at the beginning of the presentation, it's not necessarily like what's in those RTP and MTIP amendments. If you just looked at them uh, without understanding all the context, you're like, oh, well, that seems fine. They're going to go do a study and do some preliminary engineering. The problem is that there are very few opportunities for actual formal action at any local table where uh, local electeds are sitting. And so, as you can see here, there will be another amendment with the Regional Mobility Pricing Project. That's going to be the project that aims to do congestion pricing on the rest of 205 and all of I-5. So there's another opportunity for Metro JPAC to vote there. And then as they're developing policy, um, they're saying they will be back to check in with Metro and JPAC. Although this is new information, I'm not sure exactly all what it means, but I wanted to share this with you so you can see kind of the lay of the land, what our opportunities are. But as we understand it right now, knowing the committee set up, the only leverage point that we have as local jurisdictions right now is this green star, which is right here, which is where we are, which is why it's so important in my mind to build some trust with ODOT, take some time to do this collaboratively, to develop this amendment so that they can continue to do the study as they've been directed by the legislature, answer so many of our questions that they need to do more study to do, but that we're also building trust and getting commitments from them on the things that are most concerning to us. Because when that policy is developed at the OTC table, we don't know what that's going to look like for us, opportunities to weigh in. So it's critical right now for us to get on the same page. We're asking ODOT to come to the table. We want to be collaborative and figure out how we can move forward, at least with the study part. Um, we're really, I, I said that earlier, we're struggling with that. They're really, they're just not um, slowing down at all and, and offering the time. So if you do a response um, to this letter, not that you asked for my recommendation, but I would highly encourage you to include some pressure to the OTC to tell their staff to take the time to collaborate with the region. It's not, I just want you all to know, it's not just Clackamas County. It's not just us saying that we're not ready. It's everyone around the MPAC and JPAC tables and other people that aren't there who are sitting there scratching their heads saying, wait a minute, we're doing, this isn't just a project you're going to build. 
this is a new program. It's probably the biggest change in transportation funding that we will see in our lifetimes. We, we don't take it lightly. It's not a small project. It's a new program that we need to do together if we're gonna be successful. So take the time to do it right and do it with us. Don't do it to us. So thank you. Hope I answer your question. No, I thought you did a great job, Jamie. Um, it, if I could, I, I'm really looking to know, like, if we, if, if the county doesn't sign off on the RTP, will ODOT pick up its marbles and take a project in Southern Oregon? Or, or, or what, or will they, they apply the money towards something else in Multnomah County? What will they do if we just say no? I guess is what I'm asking. I, and I'm, I'm asking to kind of project forward, but that's kind of what I'm, I'm wondering about. If I might, Chair, um, may I respond when add yeah. a couple of details? Thank you. Um, so I would say we have asked that question and ODOT staff has answered, they don't know. I have also heard, and not in a public meeting and not recorded, we have heard them threatening that they will not construct phase 1A of the 205 capital project, that they will stop that if, if the RTP amendment doesn't move forward. So there have been some I would say um, some ideas thrown out, uh, although not publicly, but um, when asked the, um, some of the staff that we work with on a regular basis, they answered that they did not know what would happen. Um, so we don't know the answer to your question. Uh, there are a lot of possibilities and a lot of, I would say, um, ideas that have been offered in private meetings that have not been said publicly, um, but I would love to hear the answer to that question because we've all been asking it to. And I would add to that answer that there is um, legislative priority to advance this project. It's one of the three projects identified in House Bill 2017. It's one of the projects identified in House Bill 3055 that passed last year as a priority project for the region. It's a project of regional and national significance. There are statewide implications to this project being constructed. So while those other things may be true, those elements that Jamie just described are true. Those other elements about what the project is and represents for the county, the region, and the state are also significant. So uh, there's there's a whole context to the importance of this project beyond just does it need to be told and is everyone frustrated about it. There is state viability in it, interstate commerce that are dependent on an earthquake ready bridge and the relief of congestion there. Well, and that's why I find you know, Jamie's comment about, you know, will they pick up their toys and go elsewhere in the state to do that when they say, you know, ODOT says in its letter, there's a $24 million annual impact that's growing every year by this stretch of highway, freeway, not being improved upon. I mean, you can't talk much more about the state economic impact than that alone. I mean, that there is huge. So, where else are you going to pick up your toys and go to that's going to improve the state's economic um, turnaround to that tune? I don't know. Commissioner Savas. Great discussion. Um, one, yeah, uh, Trent, you kind of said it. Um, there is legislative direction to build, to do the three bottleneck projects. Okay, there's legislative direction to to do tolling or congestion pricing. Um, there is not legislative direction to do tolling the way it's proposed. I'm not saying it's not. What I'm saying is that there, there's flexibility there. Um, it, it didn't describe to, a, to, the, to this precise level that they, to do it this way. There's no, nothing in the legislation that says toll all lanes. There's nothing in the legislation to toll all the sections of I-5 and I-205. So um, the fact they're being inflexible um, is a little bit bothersome. Uh, we have to re just uh, think back a little bit. Um, Rose Quarter has been, you know, they've been in negotiations with Portland. Uh, they have been flexible with Portland. They have made concessions to, Port to Portland for the Rose Quarter project. And what, what discussions and flexibility or concessions have they made to us? Zero at this point. I think that's a problem. Um, I, I would say, as far as the letter and the response, you know, it's one thing to be dismissed uh, by, by, the, by the policy body, but that didn't happen. We were dismissed by staff. So 
you know, I think it's problematic for the OTC to say, it, is, is it staff is in charge and not the OTC? Um, or is it the OTC in charge and then staff did this with their knowledge or not? I, I don't know, but it's problematic either way. Uh, my suggestion, I mean, you know, do with it as you may, but my suggestion is say, is that uh, send, send a very brief letter communication that says we need an explanation. And actually we would like you to come in our next C4 meeting and explain this to us. That's it. I mean, to neglect the people that we represent, okay, almost a hundred of us, if you add up all the elected officials that make up C4, okay, and, and the 400,000 people we represent, to, to just ignore that and, and essentially just dismiss us, uh, that, that's, that's just, it's just dead wrong. I mean, if that's the state, the way the state wants to play ball, that's, that's unfortunate. Uh, but it reflects poorly on the state, it reflects poorly on the OTC, it reflects poorly on, OT, on, on ODOT staff, unfortunately. I, I, I think there needs, I think this begs an explanation, uh, frankly. Um, I'm gonna, as soon as I'm done talking, I'm gonna hit enter uh, and you're gonna see a chat. In the chat, you'll see a link to a Limit Week article that came out about a bridge, by the way, um, in, in, uh, in Louisville. Um, what I wanna say is that the, they have not demonstrated a solution towards diversion on this thing. That is the most critical life yeah. threatening issue before us with this project. If their strategy is simply to, to, to divert people off the freeways to control congestion and put them on our local streets, that is, that is, that's wrong. Interstate traffic does not belong on our local streets. That's their strategy, okay? When you see this article, you will see how it really emptied a complete freeway. Uh, it's, it's, it's fascinating. And there's other examples of that as well around, around the country. So, uh, can there, there again, there, there's, if their solution is simply to push the traffic on our local roads and, and we're not going to be compensated, we're not going to get revenue sharing, we're, we're, they're not going to take the responsibility for the accidents, that is wrong. I think we need to stand firm on that. That needs to be the point. If, if public if safety and saving lives is part of this state's program, ODOT's program, and they're going to put more people at risk by putting them on local roads, cutting through our neighborhoods, trying to save time, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll fight on that one. So I'm going to conclude my comments and I'll hit the chat and you can read the link. It's a fascinating article. There's none, a number of ways to look at it and spin it, but I think it's pretty clear. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Mayor Buck. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I agree we uh, should absolutely uh, send back a response. Um, I do think that uh, as we've seen, um, you know, these these responses that we've been getting in, in our uh, regional meetings from ODOT really um, based on kind of the the scope and the the timing and and the kind of, you know, hey, we don't have any other option here. Um, and, and we've been asking, I think, as others have said, you know, for this policy discussion, that's really what we're looking for um, from 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 the OTC. And so I think if we could frame, um, you know, my recommendation would be to, you know, frame the um, uh, the, the letter around that would just seem to be kind of not syncing up in, in our communications. Um, and uh, Margie at Metro, she had, uh, you know, interesting kind of historical perspective on, on all this and the whole reason that, um, you know, um, MPOs um, came to exist, you know, were around during the, you know, Eisenhower administration when the freeways were being constructed and, and just obliterated so many neighborhoods. And we said, hey, we need more local voices, you know, involved in this process. And um, so, um, I, but it's like ODOT never really adapted to the, you know, that, that way of engaging with, with the community. And so when I see, you know, Jamie, the, the timeline, you know, that you put up, it's like, they're just so dead set on moving forward with this path that, that they see as the recipe for moving forward. They just cannot, and, and they've, you know, they've shortened that timeline. They, they've told us between when, you know, the I-205 tolling will start and when the, the RMPP, you know, they keep, and it's at this point, I mean, why can't, why wouldn't they want to do a comprehensive plan? It just really does not make, um, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, and it, for all of us here at the local level, I mean, we couldn't even build a park using a process like this. 
you know, we don't, we, we are all required to have uh, just basic uh, infrastructure studies, traffic studies in place before we move forward with even the most basic of projects. And here we're talking about a huge, huge um, project of regional significance that is going to have an impact for, for, for generations um, and, and has so many uh, broad implications and impact so many communities that these local voices really are important and they need, I think, to, to dismantle this timeline, this process that somehow is just so um, ingrained in the way they do things that they just cannot at all step outside of it and think, well, yeah, maybe we could approach this a little bit differently. Um, and so maybe that's a, a way that we kind of respond to because none of this really makes um, any sense, but we absolutely cannot allow them to, I don't know, turn this around on, on us you know, as if it's, you know, Clackamas County um, is, is just opposed to, I mean, we're not, uh, you know, no one is opposed to, to these, these road user fees, and we just want to do it in the right, uh, in the right way. And we're, we're not asking for years of delay, we're asking for some months to put a very reasonable approach, you know, together that could really pay off and the, and, the, and it does incorporate all of these these local voices that they really left out of the conversation back well not you know these particular people but state agencies and and federal highway administrations i mean they need to start doing things uh differently so that and and here's a chance where we can um we can do that you know as we go ahead so those are my thoughts thank you mayor buck appreciate it uh councilor lewis and then uh, mayor kaiser Sure, thank you so much. I could echo so much of what's already been said. Um, I find it incredibly frustrating that uh, staff at Metro and staff at the jurisdictions, mostly being led by Jamie, um, but many of your cities have uh, really smart people who've been trying to dig in as well and are very much getting um, only partial answers to questions that are asked. Um, the most basic of which is what the finance plan for the bridge construction really is. Um, the, you know, basic kind of uh, Excel spreadsheet would work, a fancy graph that they pay a graphic designer to make look sharp would work, but we got nothing, neither one of those, nothing in between. Um, and all we know is that uh, they're going to be super reliant on bonding against potential future revenue. Um, one concern I have is that I've heard mention from ODOT staff that they already have a limited level of authority for tolling new construction of bridges. So I'm wondering how serious they're using that threat. Um, so that's another thing just to keep in mind. I think we have been as um, impacted elected officials with constituents behind us who say, hell no, we've been quite mature in not using the word hell and instead just saying, please no, please give us a couple of months to work on this. And the modest request that's been made in writing and verbally multiple times to go until April is being ignored. Um, ODOT staff has again um, approached uh, Chair Craddock um, and requested that she not uh, delay a vote. So I think we should be uh, very upfront that the, the region's united on this because this is the wrong precedent to set um, for a program that some people across the region do wanna see, some people across the region don't wanna see, but no matter what, a program of, of congestion pricing does not get started with a project like this. Um, so we have to be very serious about saying no and voting no. Um, we also could use parliamentary procedure to push off the vote. Um, I think you know we're all smart people and can read the Roberts rules and figure out a couple of different ways to do that. Um, we could also try and do amendments on the fly. I don't love the idea, but we should be ready to all be on the phone with each other, pushing through amendment approvals on less than two weeks time. It's not how good policy gets made, but if we're in that box, we might have to do it. So just playing out what might happen. And then back to the question of Metro. Um, TPAC tomorrow could vote or could not vote. The JPAC vote can happen no matter what happens at TPAC. TPAC is advisory to JPAC. JPAC can make a vote um, with a TPAC recommendation or without a TPAC recommendation. And JPAC does not have to agree with the TPAC recommendation. JPAC um, sends a recommendation or sends a policy to Metro Council. Metro Council can either affirm it, change it, or say no. And if it does change it, it goes back to JPAC to affirm that change. And if it says no, it's 
to Metro and JPAC to negotiate and essentially have um, a conference committee to work out what's gonna happen next. I will say I've talked extensively with all but one of my colleagues um, and the one colleague I haven't talked extensively with, I've spoken with for let's say five to 10 minutes. So I've, talking, I, I've, I've spent the time working with my colleagues. Um, I do not expect um, anybody to be in a different place than the region is and in particular Clackamas County is right now on this. Um, so that's where we're at right now. Um, I think we've got to make sure that ODOT really takes, I mean, they did their own study. They saw the importance of this corridor for local travel. So they got to take the local voices seriously. And we're not going to hammer every single thing out, but we got to hammer out the framework for how local voices are important and have control and power going forward. Um, Christine, thank you. I, I, you know, the number of years that I've now been on C4 and in, in, in this group, it's, um, I commend um, you and the Metro Council. Um, I think this is maybe the first time I think we may have been on 100% on the same page as a, as a C4 body with Metro um, on something. I mean, we've had um, probably some logger jams and some things in years past, but uh, I really do appreciate um, Metro um, carrying a lot of the weight on this and it's seeming to be that being in in sync and hearing what we're saying as well. And so that's refreshing. I'm not sure what's you know totally being said elsewhere in, in the other counties and whatnot, but um, please you know share that with the Metro Council that thank you for you know um, partnering with with us in this and um, and and trying to get this right. I mean that's the thing is we want to get this right. Um, you know, and uh, I've not been anywhere where tolling has been on a whole road unless it's a brand new road specific for tolling. You know, I grew up in, in Ohio where you got turnpikes and that's, but you, it, that's just brand new road and you pay for it to use it, to do the whole system like that. Uh, I'm having some, I'm still having huge issues with it. So um, thank you, Christine. I appreciate that. Mayor yeah, Kaiser. Absolutely. Well, first off, I got the one, one of the bigger issues I have is congestion pricing and fixing a bridge. It's two different things. And it's getting crammed down our throat as one thing. It's two different problems. And, you know, I don't trust ODOT as far as I can see them. And it started back with the I-5 interstate bridge with how much money was wasted on trying to develop a new bridge there and nothing happened. Now we're getting ready to deal with diversion traffic. And I know Mayor Hodson, I believe ODOT's getting ready to come through and repave your city. Um, my city hasn't been repaved in a long time. And I believe the Woodburn exit's probably gonna be about one of the last exits you can get off and not have to get told. And you can just sneak right on around and head up into Sandy, Gresham and not deal with tolling. Uh, ODOT was in our city council meeting here a few weeks ago, and when asked, when are we going to get paved, uh, they have no clue. It's not going to happen. And if anybody's driven through my road, make sure you have a good tumbler cap full of coffee, because if it's not a tumbler, you're going to end up wearing it, because our highway is so bad. Um, it takes somebody ruining a wheel to get ODOT to come out and patch a hole in the middle of 211 through our city. So if they want to fight, let's fight. I, you know, this isn't my day job. We, none of us, most of us don't get paid to be mayors or be council members. Um, you know, it's time to take a stand and it's time to fight for something and it's time to make hard decisions. This is what we were elected to do. Thank you for your time, guys. Thanks, Guy, I appreciate that. Christine? I'm sorry, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up, um, Councillor Heisey brought up earlier the uh, report that was just given to staff at 5 p.m. today. Um, I've scanned it, I just got it, um, and it's for TPAC, so it doesn't have a whole lot of technical to it, but it's just highlighted revisions on the proposed ordinance. And real important for people to know, because it's gonna be the threat we start to hear, is that they've crossed out completion of the project by 2025. And they've said that timeline is no longer attainable. 
So we're gonna to start to hear that by our action, we've already killed the Abernathy timeline. And I don't know how truthful that is. I know the in-water window so that they can put a machine in the water and start doing the stuff without affecting the salmon. And I love salmon, do not take this the wrong way. I love salmon. I know that's real, but how have we, how have we missed this window already? Because here we are, it's still February and we're still talking and we could be reasonable here, but they're, they're gonna start telling us that we're missing the construction window. I, I, I would be remiss if not bringing that up. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, we're, we're hearing things like that. Those are typical tactics, right? We're, we're the ones now being painted with the, um, I know that this is not a, a fun phrase for many of us in Clackamas County, some wear it as a badge of honor, but you know, uh, the, the, they're blaming, you know, the Clackistanis for um, delay in this project or making things worse or whatever because of wanting to have more dialogue or wanting to understand it better. Like I, I go through this letter and to me, two, uh, a couple of things, right? So um, other work, so one of the paragraphs, so other work underway, such as the income-based toll report and the Oregon Highway Plan um, Oregon Transportation Plan updates will establish policies for both projects being I-205 and I-5. So what is the income-based toll report? When do we get to see that? And what is that impact looking like, right? Um, do we get to see this? And then they go on and say um, the benefits um, of this project and the impact of tolling. Well, uh, I'm curious as to what to, they're seeing as benefits to tolling. I don't know if I've seen that yet. I know some of the impacts of tolling, but what about these other pieces that they're alluding to? So um, I, I get, so Trent, to get us, I know we're running long here, but um, I do think a response letter is appropriate. I do think we need to say um, thank you to Mr. Finn for his letter, but that our letter wasn't directed to ODOT for ODOT to respond to, it was to OTC and we need a response and we need a response sooner than later. Um, Councilor Heidi, did you have something else to add? Uh, if you wanna move us to the next segment of this and kind of wrap things up, I'm good. No, I don't. I, I just, I wanted to acknowledge that the time that we're at, and but this is an important piece um, to, to get dialed in. So I'll, no, please. Yeah. Um, feel free. Yeah. No, I, the only thing I was going to add is that I do believe that a lot of this language, if you've, if you've ever been a project manager or done project management work, you may recognize it because it is very much about people who have their head down and are looking at timelines and are, are getting told this is when things have to happen. ODOT works in six-year increments. It's a domino effect when one project gets held up and it goes you know, it, it just continues to cascade down. Those are all federally funded projects. We all know that federal funds come with timelines that are attached to them. So I, I understand where the anxiety is coming from, but we have also consistently been hearing from ODOT and from the Oregon Transportation Commission that it is time to do things differently. And it is time to address equity issues. It is time to take climate seriously. It is time to have greater engagement with our communities around project planning. And this is us saying, I'm sorry, you're, you are right and we agree and this isn't it. So there's that is the message that is, I think, not getting through because the view is, is very project oriented and not looking at the bigger vision and mission statements that OTC and ODOT have been putting out there for a while now. I just saw some of it come from uh, Chris Strickler today in a, in a presentation I was watching. So we need to you know, remind them that this is, this is our opportunity to say, this is what we need and this is what you promised and we're not getting it. Okay, thank you. Um... Mayor Buck, go ahead, and then I'm going to turn it back to Real quick, but real yeah. quick, uh, thank you. Could um, uh, would, would perhaps uh, Jamie or um, uh, could explain what is the significance of them um, uh, putting this project on the um, 
uh, on the financially constrained project list. And that was a more recent change that they threw out uh, in the last their their last kind of um, message at JPAC and and MPAC that they had moved the project. Uh, are you talking about the capital project or the tolling project? The tolling project, financially constrained project list. I don't have an answer to that. I would look to Councillor Lewis. Is that something that you're aware of? Sorry, I typed instead of listening oh, no. deeply. Um, you're looking for a, a written response to the to the end, or just a, how they responded generally to our what, comments. The, the significance of of the the project they mentioned at at uh, JPAC and Impact, how the the project is now on the financially constrained uh, list. It seemed to be like a new thing. What's this, and what's the significance of that? Oh, but, by the way, a comment from uh, Scott from ODOT in chat that addresses your question. Thank yes. You. So it's not. Oh, go ahead, Jamie. No, I was just thinking, Scott, because I didn't know the answer, uh, but it sounds like it's not on the financially constrained list currently. I hadn't heard that. I know the capital project is because the funding's already approved to start the construction. It's already been programmed last August and went through all the approvals necessary. So that's that's the one I was familiar with. Okay, so the tolling. So when I when we see like this, the um, with the project name, I-205 tolling project, um, Oswego Highway to Stafford Road description, um, and it says financially constrained project list. Yes, but that's not the that's not the tolling project. That's the capital, the twenty three million. I, I'm happy to circle back with you, um, okay. Mayor Buck. I'm not sure. I'm I'm wondering if by programming the funds for the MTIP, they will be adding it to the financially constrained list because then they will be funding the project for the first time. That's when the first monies will be programmed. But I'm not sure of that, so I'm happy to work with Metro staff and get you an answer. Okay, thank you so much. And my understanding is it's as important to have the money as it is to be in the RTP on that list for federal approvals. The person who checks at the federal level doesn't care about resolutions or anything, just cares about the actual text of the RTP. Yeah, the, the, what, I'll, what I'll add is that those the, that term financially constrained list is kind of misleading. Um, if anything's gonna get built, it has to be on the financially constrained list. So it, it is it's counterintuitive, but it's just it's just a, a designation and a in a it's it's the bucket list for projects to happen. Um, so that's how they that's how they describe it. So Trent, um, to put a bow on this, um, what have you have you heard enough uh, in terms of setting a course for um, a response? I believe so. I have this the meeting is recorded. I've been taking notes. I'm sure Jamie has too. And we work together very closely on this. And so we can put together a response. I want to clarify something that I've heard though, because I've heard I feel like both. Um, but I believe that you are directing me to draft a letter to the OTC, not to ODOT, uh, not back to uh, Director Finn. Thank you. And that can be a phone call. Uh, that Jamie or I can make. Thank you for your reply. Um, but the letter that you are asking us to move forward with is to um, push to the OTC, reiterating a lot of the points that we've been trying to make to articulate a clear position on what the ask is to diversify the funding and a variety of other things that you mentioned tonight that y'all have all eloquently said. So we can put that communication together process-wise. Uh, we can work on that as quick as we can and then try to get that content to the executive committee for um, sort of a head nod, but I, you know, and I'll look to them on how they want to approve it. Y'all can talk about how you want it to be approved here. It's very processy, bureaucratic -y, but um, do y'all want the whole letter to come back to y'all as a group? Do y'all want to entrust the executive committee to uh, sign off on this letter? Uh, time is kind of of the essence, but not necessarily. Um, I think the impact meeting is in Wednesday. Um, the next, is it the ninth mayor buck of the next impact meeting? And then, the, and then the OTC, I think, will meet on the 17th. So there's a couple of milestones that are in front of you. C4 Metro will meet the day before. Um, JPAC meets on the 17th. And so 
the, but the executive committee doesn't meet meet until the 14th. So there's a few milestones that are up ahead of us, but I think we could probably do some email traffic with the executive committee, have something drafted by next Monday or Tuesday. Um, if you want this whole group to approve it, I'm at your disposal. If you want to entrust the executive committee, I'll look to the direction of this group. The impact meeting is February 23rd. Okay, it's pushed to the, the later the later Wednesdays. Okay, great. So you got a couple meetings between now and then. TPAC tomorrow, C4 executive on the 14th, uh, C4 Metro on the 16th, JPAC on the 17th, as well as the OTC. Yeah, um, I, I think there needs to be in, I think Mr. Gronke made the, the, the point that we need to give a little bit of our own kind of, you know, <laughs> off on goo to you as well uh, in, in, in the letter. Um, you know, I think somebody just put in the chat, I mean, you know, they're, they're already putting things out there, right? Threats of, well, we're gonna pull and go somewhere. We're gonna pick up our toys and go somewhere else. It's Clackamas' fault for the delay, this and that. I, well, do we put language about getting behind it, a, a citizen initiative to put it to a vote? I mean, that's, that's, that's hardball, folks. If I might, up to you on how you want to move forward. My recommendation to staff is that, per the, per the way that Councillor Lewis described it, your ability to take the high road on a lot of this conversation has kept you in the room. I feel like it's my job as staff to make sure that you're aware of that. That doesn't mean that you can't have the feelings you have or that the other approach might not be necessary. That's not my position to say. I do feel strongly as your staff supporting you that the high road and keeping your powder dry while applying appropriate pressure has kept you in the room on a lot of this. Well, then I would say that it, as you and Jamie being the cool heads in the room currently, um, hopefully can come up with language that's terse enough, but yet keeps our powder dry. Is that a fair summation group? I mean, I think some of us want to go scorched earth, but that's not, you know, that doesn't keep us at the table, I don't think. Um, and it becomes a, a, a bigger stick that ODOT and OTC uses uh, in regards to us in, in the future. So how do we do that subtly? How do we, uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave that to you guys. Cause again, Trent and Jamie, I think are the cool heads here a little bit. If, if I may, uh, uh, perhaps another way to go about this is we're elected officials it's our constituents that are hottest about this. Uh, and, and we're stuck in the position of having to follow through on what we are being told uniformly, universally, by who we are talking to about this project. So another way to do this again is to say, well, we're the, you know, and this is what we're hearing from our constituents and they are hot under the collar and you can look at these initiatives that are going forward, something that might be not quite the stick in the eye. Thanks, Martin. I appreciate that. Trent, Jamie, you have your work cut out for you on this one. That's true. And I thank you for the compliment for keeping a cool head about this. I'll just say that Jamie and I had a week and a half head start to cool down. It's probably the, a better way to say it. <laughs> um, so I appreciate your compliment there. We'll work on a reply on your behalf and we'll vet it with the executive committee. Yeah. Um, and then seek their direction on whether to get full group approval or not, but um, do want to encourage each of you that this is a good C4 approach, but each of you have your own elected power from your own jurisdictions and have many paths that you can take. And ability to reach out to a variety of officials at ODOT, the OTC and wherever to make your voice heard and to make your constituencies heard. And so don't feel like what C4 is doing high road or low road or whatever you choose is limiting you from also going out and doing the work that you've been elected to do to represent your communities appropriately. Each of you have a lot of power in this conversation um, and y'all's cool headed approach to date, I, I do believe has kept you in the room. It's been very thoughtful. Um, you have regional buy-in on a lot of this project because of that approach. Um, and as Mayor Hodson said, that is a rare bird uh, for Clackamas County. Um, and it's a beautiful one. I think there's a lot of, a lot of good things happening right now. 
So we'll work on that letter. We'll also keep you informed about you know, opportunities to testify at the OTC if that's where you'd like to go. Um, a lot of you have your work cut out for you at those regional tables. Uh, please let Jamie and I know how we can support you in those, in those capacities. So we'll work on the letter. Um, please reach out to us if you have questions or other ideas on how we can help you engage. Okay. Um, any other thoughts or comments? Uh, Mayor Kaiser. Yes, the letter that's going to be printed, would we be able to get copies of it? I mean, it would be real easy for us to start handing it off to our state reps and our senators for, you know, our districts and just hand them a copy of the letter, you know, a nice little one-on-one -on -one coffee with the letter in hand. Yes, I'm happy to do that. Uh, per one of the comments here, I believe it was uh, Mr. Myers to have a robust uh, CC list at the end of this letter. Um, so we have many of those emails at my disposal um, and Jamie's disposal, uh, but of course we would, we would make sure that each of you have a copy of this letter as well. And I'm happy to report that many of your state legislators, federal delegation members and others are watching this closely. So they, they, they know these conversations are happening. Okay. Good work, everyone. I really appreciate the input and the conversation and uh, on this. And uh, um, yeah, we just got to keep keep on keeping on here. Um, I definitely think I know Commissioner Savas. I think it's the sixth Wednesday, the sixteenth. Is it that? Um, that looks like the chambers are doing a uh, a Clackamas Chambers um, kind of listening session uh, presentation about this as well. Um, I, I think when we talk about kind of some scorched earth pieces, that might be where we get some of that that horsepower from, from the chambers, from, um, you know, um, livabil uh, you know, livability groups or um, homeowners associate, I mean, uh, you know, Scott mentioned, you know, yeah, 99E is going to be a major diversion piece. And so who in Canby can we, you know, drum up and, and be that, um, that more of a, the, the brawlers that we need while we be our quote unquote diplomats on this particular one. So, okay. Um, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, next on the agenda, um, Hey, we're only 40 minutes behind. Um, the C4 agenda topic priorities. Um, and so kind of going through that, Trent. I'm just gonna be uh, proud to say the importance of this committee has uh, necessitated that the, the big topics keep coming to you and you don't need to decide which topics you need to chase. So that's my way of saying that I'm gonna recommend that you punt this again. Uh, happen in November, December, and January uh, for these vital topics. Um, but you know, ultimately, this is a conversation about how you schedule your work moving forward. Uh, but I think the time that you spent today on the I-205 topic was, uh, my, my feeling anyway, is time well used. Um, we can move this discussion about the priority discussions for C4 to the March meeting, which, apropos, is your technically your first meeting of the C4 year uh, as March is when we do membership turnovers when that's appropriate. Um, and the, I'll just take this opportunity to note that um, the membership expected to turn over would be the Hamlet seats, the CPO seats, uh, the district seats, um, as well as our um, transit seats do a friendly handshake rotation uh, as well at this time every year. And so um, that would be something to expect, and I am a little bit behind, but we'll be working with those different seats to um, ensure that they're going through the process to either reaffirm or reappoint those, those seats. But my recommendation is to punt until next month this particular topic and move into the next discussion. Okay. Everyone good with that? I'm seeing head nods. Good. All right. Catching up. Legislative update. Mr. Lyons. Yeah, I'm bringing them in now. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Great discussion tonight. Uh, I'm here to give you a quick 
uh, overview and update on how uh, the legislative session is going. So um, you may have read that the short session has begun. They gaveled in uh, two days ago uh, for session. Uh, it's a 35 day uh, short session. So a reminder that how these you know, were initially created was for the purpose of addressing budget fixes and technical issues. Uh, but what we've seen since then is the legislature still uh, tackles major issues um, when these happen, just despite the compressed timeline. Uh, so this year is quite unique. There, there are many new faces uh, in the legislature and in leadership. So uh, there is a new speaker, Dan Rayfield from Corvallis, a new majority leader, uh, House Majority Leader, Julie Fahey from the Eugene area. Uh, a new House Minority Leader, Vicki Breeze Iverson from Prineville. And then on the Senate side, uh, the Senate Minority Leader, Tim Knope from Bend. So really, uh, President C Peter Courtney is the only um, person still in his leadership position. And he announced last month that he is going to be retiring. So a lot of changes. Um, there were also a couple new legislators sworn in just this past week, uh, appointed uh, one from Hillsboro and one from Portland. And then on Monday, the Clackamas County Commission together with the Marion County Commission will be appointing yet another new legislator uh, representing House District 39. Uh, the makeup of the legislature this session is uh, Democrats have a 37 to 23 supermajority in the House. And uh, in the Senate, Democrats have an 18 to 12 supermajority. Um, with, so, with uh, uh, COVID still um, with us, the building is uh, a little bit, they're handling the building a little differently now. It is open uh, and I would say more business is being conducted in person, but by and large, most offices are still operating virtually. Um, so most of uh, my counterparts are not going down. We're continuing to lobby virtually. Um, what we are seeing for likely uh, issues coming up this session, uh, legislative leaders together with the governor have outlined a number of their priorities uh, and the governor spoke to many of those in her state of the state address today. Uh, they, uh, and I'll just tick through some of the, the major ones. They're looking at providing 400 million uh, in affordable housing. Uh, in education, they are looking looking at fixes for the current shortage of teachers and substitutes during the pandemic, uh, public safety, uh, some unfinished business, uh, wanting to see a stronger focus by police on uh, violent crimes and less so on more minor infractions like uh, broken tail, tail lights, for instance, um, advancing the private forest accord that had been negotiated uh, $200 million invested in workforce development and career training. Uh, that is being uh, known as Future Ready Oregon for the purpose of preparing more people for, for emerging jobs in certain fields like healthcare, construction, and manufacturing. Uh, more funding for uh, behavioral health workforce. $100 million uh, to increase childcare services. 38 million to help small businesses and a number of other uh, policy bills relating to climate change and natural resources. So certainly, you know, not a shortage of issues for a 35 day session. All told, the legislature has roughly one and a half to two billion dollars to spend. And I had heard recently that there are roughly six billion dollars in requests in. So they will have no trouble doing that. And I'll add that some of that surplus has to go into the state reserve fund and the governor and leaders had also agreed previously to carry $500 million of federal funding over to the 2023-2025 budget cycle. Uh, so today we're in day three of session. There have been 261 bills introduced. Uh, because it's a short session, deadlines are fast and furious. Most of the bills have to be have to have had a hearing by Monday in order to stay alive. So if Trent and I look tired, that is why. Um, in terms of Clackamas County's priorities, 
you've talked about one of them, the I-205 project, and I'll get to that in a minute. Our, our top priority as a county is the county courthouse and replacing the existing building uh, in downtown Oregon City with a new facility on our Red Soils campus. Last session, the legislature authorized their 50% matching funds for that to the tune of $94.5 million but they still need to uh, approve the expenditure limitation on those dollars uh, pending the county and OJD, Oregon Judicial Department, uh, providing more information on our public-private partnership approach with this project. So that is underway now. Uh, back to 205, we are continuing to just keep our caucus in, engaged and informed about this topic. Um, as Trent said, uh, very happy to report that our legislators are listening, they are hearing from their constituents, they are hearing from all of you. Um, and I'm really happy to report that as of literally minutes ago, the 15 member Clackamas Caucus officially signed off on a letter that they will be providing, sending tonight, I believe, to the OTC, outlining their concerns about uh, ODOT's tolling approach. Uh, suggesting that some some of the federal dollars be used for the project and just urging them to work with us collaboratively on a solution. So that should be really well timed and we will certainly pass it along to you as soon as we get it. And then just a couple other issues um, on our on the county's agenda. One is generally speaking to support policies and funding to address the housing crisis and improve housing stability for low income households. And as I said, there will be a big focus on housing in the session. And then the last one is um, trying to get uh, state indemnification of local governments in cases where we are acting on behalf of the state to provide services such as behavioral health. This is an area where we are, we are increasingly supporting the state with delivering these services at the local level, but there, are, uh, there is a lack of liability uh, when those funds come down to us in making sure that we are covered. And, and uh, so we are asking the state to make sure that when those funds come, they also, there's also a transfer of uh, indemnification to us to carry that out. So that is it in a nutshell. I will leave it there and I'm happy to answer any questions. Chris, as always, a pleasure to see you. Um, any questions or comments for Chris at this point? point. I just find it amazing that they're able to look at 261 bills in um, a roughly one week period. That's, that's impressive reading. It is indeed. <laughs> it keeps us busy. I bet. All right. Well, Chris, thank you. Keep us posted. Well, uh, thanks, everyone. Yeah. All right, uh, updates and other business. Uh, JPAC update. I think you got it tonight. Yeah, do you really want to hear more? We had a visit from Blumenauer. He encouraged us to all hold hands and sing Kumbaya. Um, no, it was it was good. It was great to hear from him. Sunset, or I'm sorry, Sunrise Corridor, um, I think uh, was in the UPWP. That all went well. Yeah, there's nothing to add. You don't need to hear anything more about JPEG. All right. Is that the sentiments for impact as well? As we heard, every, uh, Commissioner Lewis. I'm Council. sorry to do this. This isn't strictly JPEG. I feel I need to let people know. We um, voted on the Boone Bridge uh, UPWP at JPEG. Everybody at JPEG, except for one person, voted yes. The one person who voted yes happens to be my colleague. Um, so we then pulled it from the consent agenda and it has not gotten back onto our metro agenda and ODOT will need to be coming before us to give a full staff report. So a little bit of a delay on Boone Bridge uh, should be noted, um, particularly uh, by Mayor Fitzgerald. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so JPAC is good, MPAC is good. Yeah. Um MPAC, um, we have a lot of new uh, members this year in 2022 as jurisdictions kind of shifted assignments around when I, including uh, Councilor Sherman, who's now representing, um, uh, well, some chunk of Clackamas County, right? <laughs> and uh, Mayor Walter is serving as an alternate and we welcomed um, Commissioner Scholl, 
uh, also to the MPAC uh, table. We have Commissioner Fisher serving as alternate, and of course, uh, um, Mayor Lyle, Lyle Smith at the uh, at the table there as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, I two hundred five stuff. We um, we are hearing at our meeting um, later this month. Um, kind of first discussion on the on the 2023 RTP uh, amendment, the public in, engagement um, uh, framework uh, for that uh, uh, for that work and um, lots of other good topics coming up on the agenda this year as well. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, sir. All right, Climate Action Plan Task Force update. That's me. <laughs> um we haven't met since November, but um, there, have, there have been a lot of emails going back and forth. And this started um, probably back in October, but there's been really frustration within the group that um, our meetings have been rushed and we're not getting like summaries of what's happening. And then we got a draft of what's going out to the public. And a lot of it didn't include um, the particular issue, I guess the most um, important issue that everybody's con or most of us are concerned about is that they picked um, goals and priorities for 2050, but um, there's a lot of concern that there isn't anything for um, starting now and tomorrow and in the next five years to um, help with, um, you know, net zero carbon emissions. Like we can't wait till 2050. So there's a lot of concern in the group. So it'll be interesting. Um, to see how it's addressed and if we will deal with it before late spring after community outreach. All right, thank you for that. Supportive housing services update. Thank you very much. That's me quickly. Um, it is my, my role here to give you an update on the monthly revenue of the income of supportive housing services to Clackamas County until such a time as it becomes regular, I believe. Uh, the last we spoke, I believe there was sort of a $100,000 increment monthly back in November and December. I think we got to about 800 or so. Uh, since that time, it's uh, $1,283,090 and also $96 at the tax on any of that. So $1.2 million has now come in since the uh, revenue has been collected. It's expected to start ramping up more um, sharply in the springtime uh, after tax season, of course. And then I would see Commissioner Savas's hand, and I believe that would be to discuss the discussion that the board has had this week about, um, yep, Metro's uh, proposed $5 million addition. So, uh, Commissioner Savas, I'll let you have it. Oops. Yeah, I just want to just uh, share with you all that uh, the county did ask and Metro um, uh, approved, and we spent or in committed. Uh, five million, and then we used some ARPA dollars, and we used some other dollars we had to to bridge and get on a fourteen million dollar a year track. Um, and Councillor Lewis and I spoke last week, and now that the IGAs have been signed with Metro in all three counties, which is great news, um, uh, I made a request and uh, to uh, Councillor Lewis, and she uh, indicated that they would be receptive to another loan or an advance. I brought that to the commission on Tuesday. And I think our staff are going to start working on um, crafting some language and calculating how they could help ramp up the services so that we're not we're as best prepared as we can for when the new dollars come that we can get them out. The challenge is right now, as you all know, I've been hearing it everywhere from everyone, private and public sector. We're having a hard time hiring people. It, the, the 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 labor pool out there is. Um, uh, insufficient. And when we're trying to expand something we can expand a program we've never really done before at this scale and scale it up, we just have huge challenges. So we will, we will persevere and make sure. So we got, I think we got the resources in, in place to make the next step and, um, and hopefully get our staffing up to where it needs to be and, and also push those dollars out to the uh, nonprofits as well. So we're on the way. Thank you. And thank you. Metro Councilor um, Lewis and, and Metro for the loan and the advance and we're willing to do the another advance. So thank you. Great. Man, talk about teamwork. <laughs> Look at us go. Must have been all that kumbaya there at uh, uh, JPAC there, uh, Councilor Heisey, huh? All right. Um, C4 membership updates in March. Does that mean, Trent, that it's in March and we can move on? Yeah, I already provided that update when I had the microphone a minute ago. Perfect. 
Um, other business, anything, anybody's got anything fun and exciting? I have one quick comment and that's that I will be giving you a bunch of uh, follow-up materials from this meeting so that you all will have access to it. And I will include in that, I see Mark Otten is listening. Uh, I will include in that some of the comments that many of y'all submitted to the OTC because many of y'all wrote good letters and it'll contain a lot of the same communication that um, just consistent communication amongst jurisdictions about the I-205 issue. Good for all of y'all to have it. It was my intention to include that in your packet tonight. I just missed that opportunity. So I will include it in our follow-up materials. Right. Thank you, Trent. Mr. Cook. Hey, uh, Trent, were you going to mention the uh, two webinars that uh, ODOT's putting together on the uh, tolling project coming up February 15th and 16th, I think? Yes, you you so graciously emailed that to me and then did not throw me under the bus just now. Uh, to So I'm throwing myself under the bus as a thank you. Uh, to say I will include that in the follow-up materials as well. But yes, the um, not the next weekend, but the weekend after, I think it's the 15th and 16th, yes. ODOT is doing two webinars on uh, their diversion findings. So they're, they're modeling. And that'll be sort of public, public, um, public webinars that, that anybody can attend. Uh, I think some of that information will be consistent with what was shared with the um, I-205 tolling diversion subcommittee that met in January. Uh, that meeting, the next 205 Diversion Subcommittee meeting, is also currently scheduled for that same Wednesday, the 16th, which is the same day as C4 Metro, and that I just wrote down earlier that it's the same day as that uh, Chambers uh, discussion as well. So I need to do some, uh, need to look at some calendars and see what, what might uh, free some of y'all up. Y'all are busy people. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Rick, for bringing that up, too. Appreciate it. All right. Um, wow, we went from being behind to being done early. So um, I'll give everyone seven minutes of your evening back. Um, thank you all very, very much for the uh, heavy lifting and hard work tonight. Uh, yes, Councilor Heise is waving her hand. I'm just pointing out that uh, Scott Turnoy has his hand up in the attendees list. It's up to your discretion, of course, on whether oh, you uh, do anything. I can bring them over. Sure, bring them over. All righty. Here it comes. Everyone be nice. Hi, folks. Uh, thanks so much. I don't, I don't mean to delay everyone. If you want to get on with your evening, I'm perfectly happy to um, not stand in the way, but I just wanted to offer, I do have some um, other project updates if anyone's interested. I could also drop that in the chat and uh, distribute it through uh, Trent as well, if that would be preferred. Scott, if you wouldn't mind passing that through Trent, and since he's got, sounds like some other items to get back out to us, um, he will include that and we will peruse that and uh, uh, come back to you if we've got uh, further questions. How's that sound? Fair enough. Perfect. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Scott. Scott. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Okay. I'll take a motion to adjourn. All right. It's been motioned and I'm seeing a second. Um, C4 members are oh, right. I guess all those in favor of adjourning. Looks unanimous. All right. Hey, thank you again, everyone. Great job this evening. And um, stay tuned for more, act more action to come. See everyone next month. Thank you. Thank you.